That is not a dog. That is a wolf. And you know, one of the best kept secrets here in Indiana is Wolf Park. Many of you have heard about it. It's up near Battleground, Indiana, and we're pleased to have three folks from Wolf Park here joining us today. Uh, Dawn is with us, and she's one of the puppy moms, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, Dawn Benson, Dr. Eric Klinghammer, of course, is the operator of Wolf, Wolf Park uh, near Battleground. And then Mariana Pinto is with us, too. And we've got some cute little fellas here that we're going to talk about in just a moment. But Dr. Klinghammer, first of all, uh, some folks may not have heard of Wolf Park. It's really, as I mentioned, one of the best kept secrets in our state. Tell us a little bit about Wolf Park and, and some of the educational things that it provides for the community. Wolf Park is uh, located 12 miles uh, north of uh, Lafayette, Indiana. It's accessible by Interstate uh, uh, 65, uh, exit 178. And you go to a town of Battleground, and we're a mile and a half north of there. There are signs to be followed. Uh, we'll open Saturday and Sunday from 1 to 5 each, uh, uh, from uh, essentially May until November. And on uh, Sunday at 2 o'clock, we have a wolf bison demonstration. And uh, every Friday night at 7.30, there's Howl Night. Oh, and we're going to talk about Howl Night in just a minute. I think that's one of the neatest things about Wolf Park. What's the most common misconception about wolves? Mm -hmm. um, well, the, the old mythology was that the wolf is a bad guy who goes and eats little children and uh, so on. The big bad wolf? big bad wolf kind of thing. Uh, the new mythology is that the wolf can do no wrong. <laughs> and uh, that's because of educational efforts to portray the wolf in a more favorable light, especially in the wild. And uh, here you see wolf puppies uh, that are being hand raised from the time they're very little. And many people want them as pets. And they're wonderful little creatures until they grow up and they retain all their wild instincts. And so uh, what people have to realize that these are not dogs. By raising them like dogs, that doesn't make them dogs. Now they're we potentially some, dangerous. We have some pictures that we want to show, and we'll just talk while we're looking at, at some mm. of these pictures of wolves from Wolf Park. Mm. When people uh, tr attempt to raise wolves, obviously very dangerous if they're not trained. Is that right? Mm. Uh, they're not dangerous while, while they're little, obviously, but while when, they, when they grow up, uh, because they incorporate uh, humans in their social interactions. This is uh, Cassie, uh, one of the females with the wolf puppy, and, and you can see these here, and it's a wonderful. They're, they're very cute. That's why everybody wants one. What's the difference between a wolf and a dog? Well, um, the selection essentially over thousands of generations mm -hmm. uh, through the process of domestication. Here's one of the social interactions. Uh, it's uh, called. Are they socially mad or socially happy? Dr. Uh, well, this is just uh, an aggressive interaction where they threaten each other. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you raise them uh, with people uh, exclusively and they don't have the same, uh, uh, don't have any other wolves, these are incidentally some hybrids. They look very similar uh, to them. And uh, the problem is that um, if you raise a single wolf and have him in the family, he will treat humans like he would another wolf. Mm. And the social interactions tend to be kind of uh, uh, serious if you don't know what to expect. In other words, you can't treat them like a dog. Yeah. You have to play by their rules. Don, what kind of special care do you have to give to these little guys? Um, as we're raising them, their, uh, the nutritional needs are very special. We try to give them nutrition closely matching the mothers as possible. Um, they get meat at about three weeks of age. They start to mm -hmm. gnaw on meat. What kind Most, of meat do you feed them? Um, they get what's called Nebraska brand. And basically it's zoo food. It's mm -hmm. um, an entire carcass like you put in a big blender. Right. So they get everything. But a lot of it is the social. Um, they're very cute at this age and, and they like to play like tug of war, mm. like little puppies, but you can't let them do that because then when they get to be 110 pounds and they're playing tug of war, it's not fun anymore. Mm -hmm. And because they are wolves, you have to go by wolf rules and they're not dog rules. They don't follow people rules, we follow wolf rules. M Mariana, they, they then act a lot like puppies most of the time. Is that right? Yes, and that's, I think that's why people, they, they, they see us with these puppies and they think, oh, we're just like a dog. I don't know how many people come in to the park on weekends and they say, that just looks like a puppy, a dog puppy but they don't see all the interactions. When do they start to really change and turn into a wolf? I mean, from just a puppy, as far as their actions and so forth. Well, they're already they're, now. Yeah, as soon as they're already now. Oh, sure. They, they have, have dominance interactions oh, yeah. and climb on each other and wrestle with each other and growl and so on. And they howl, too. Yeah, and, they, they, and that's they, what I want to talk yeah. about, the howling. Now, that's probably one of the neatest things about uh, Wolf Park. It's on Friday nights, right? 7.30 when the weather's good. When the weather's good and right. it's just about dark. Mm -hmm. Dawn, explain to us a little bit about the howling and, and um, this little guy. Well, this guy started when he was 10 days old. 
how ten days old. Uh -huh. yep. um, now they howl when they're uncomfortable or when they're away from home. Um, they seemed when they first started howling that they were just sort of trying it on. Mm -hmm. And when they were really hungry and they weren't getting our attention, they would howl, which of course we instantly rewarded by giving them something to eat. Mm -hmm. I think he would howl in a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He no, thinks it's a not. test of the emergency <laughs> broadcast system. Uh, he's trying to give it a go. He howled all the way up here. He's probably all howled out now. What, what's the importance of howling? I know this is one of the key elements of the life of a wolf, isn't the it? The howling is a communication uh, between members of the pack to get them together if they're dispersed and to tell other wolves in the chorus howl to stay away from their territory. It has the same function as birdsong uh, in the spring where mm -hmm. the cardinal sits here and there and howls and keeps other cardinals out. Uh, the howl is not used in the hunt. Wolves that um, hunt don't howl. Uh, but in people's minds, howling uh, means there are wolves about, and if you don't know them, you're scared of them. Right. Incidentally, the North American Indians uh, and Eskimos were never afraid of wolves. They were never afraid no, of them? In fact, hunters never are afraid of wolves. They, they, they're fellow hunters, and they respect them. It's the agricultural people that uh, displace their natural kind of food that therefore uh, have reason to, uh, to fear them because they will kill livestock if there's nothing else around. Mm -hmm. And if I may add at this point, uh, there is a natural way to protect uh, livestock against coyotes and wolves. And those are livestock guarding dogs. And we, in fact, we have some at Wolf Park. Uh, we happen to have Italian Maremmas, but the whole number of breeds where you raise these uh, dogs with the sheep or the cattle or whatever, and then uh, when wolves show up, uh, they, they bark and, uh, and then they leave. They're very effective. Are there many wolves uh, roaming around the state of Indiana? Uh, none. Except, none, uh, except at Wolf Park. Unless somebody has one that escaped. You know? What about in the United States? Um, the wolves are um, uh, all over uh, most parts of Alaska, most parts of Canada. In the United States, they're in uh, northeastern Minnesota. And they have moved on their own down into northern uh, Wisconsin. And also, in recent years, they have become reestablished in, uh, uh, in um, Glacier National Park, mm -hmm. about 20 of them now. And a few days ago, I had a call uh, from Wolf Haven in the state of Washington. The first uh, wolf uh, pack has been uh, uh, sighted in the Cascade Mountains uh, in northern Washington. Well, this has been fascinating, and I've really enjoyed it. And, and I know that a lot of parents are always looking for things to do during yes. the summer, and it sounds like Wolf Park yes. would be a great place. Yes. Quickly again, Dr. Klinghammer, how to get there from the Indianapolis metro area. Okay, uh, take I-65 to exit 178, turn north on 43 as you come off the ramp, go a few miles to 225, Big sign saying battleground, drive in the battleground and follow the signs. All right. And the howling demonstration on Friday nights is a lot of fun. I hope it? it works better than here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, thank you for being with us. Thank We've really enjoyed, us. It. really enjoyed and it. And hope you can uh, check out Wolf Park, too, mm -hmm. in near Battleground, Indiana. Coming up, we're going to take you live to Orlando and a look at the Universal Studios uh, big facility down in Orlando. We'll tell you more about that in just a bit.